All right, guys, so today we're talking about shallow crankbaits. All right, guys, so today we're talking about shallow crankbaits, right? So shallow crankbaits, it seems like a small subject, um, but as somebody who has thrown shallow crankbaits for forever now, um, I've, again, become kind of a connoisseur of these, and I would think most people who throw shallow crankbaits would agree that there are so many different ones. There's so much variety, and each of them have a place and a time. Um, so. Let's, let's try to break some of that down, and then um, we'll talk about some of the best ones, why you need to be throwing them in the fall, and then we'll talk about the gear that we need to pair them with. All right, guys, so if you need a great selection of shallow crankbaits, make sure you check out Haddon Outdoors uh, here on Clarks Hill. They're right by Wildwood. Um, so the next time you're on your way to the lake, make sure you stop in there, grab the shallow crankbaits you need, talk to DJ and his crew. Um, they will get you headed in the right direction to catch some fish. They'll be able to give you some tips, pointers, um, kind of a, the latest fishing report. So make sure you stop in and check them out. So the first kind of big category and probably the most common one is gonna be your typical square bill. Now, the two I have in my hands, I've got a Rappel of Brat and then I've got a uh, Rappel of Rocco. So personally, I am not as big of a fan of the Lucky Craft and Strike King 1.5s and 2.5s. Um, nothing against the baits. Um, I just, I, for whatever reason, I don't throw those as much. Um, I think a lot of people throw them, so I try to be a little bit different, throw something a little bit different. Um, so this Brat and the Rocco are gonna be a great option. One thing you'll also learn about me is that I I hate rattling crankbaits with a passion, um, especially the ones with the BBs and stuff in them that have that super loud rattle. I think that's completely unnecessary and I will almost always throw silent crankbaits. Um, maybe it's just me, but silent crankbaits are far and away my favorite. We'll talk about a couple that I've got that do have rattles in them, but they're much more subtle and we'll get to that. But the, the square bill is going to be kind of your most common bait. They sell them anywhere that has fishing tackle is probably going to have some square bells. Um, really good bait. So the thing that makes them unique and special is the actual square bill that you can see on these two here. Now what that does is that's gonna allow this bait to bounce off of cover really well. And that's kind of the idea with a shallow crankbait most of the time is that you're throwing it towards the bank so you're throwing it at stumps or rocks or uh, trees or you know whatever it is and you're wanting this bait to you know hit that and bounce off and deflect some way and typically when that bait is deflecting when it changes direction suddenly that's when the bass are going to bite it so you want a square bill um, a lot of the time because if you're throwing in heavy cover which is commonly what i'm doing you're you're going to want that square bill to make sure it ricochets well it, it kind of protects the hooks it keeps this bait from getting hung up all the time so a square bill is going to be really effective for that um, you've got your plastic style um, so like this brat it's kind of a hybrid kind of plastic balsa um, I've got a lot of six cents, um, so like the flat crush and the t regular crush are going to be kind of your more 1.5 style baits. Um, the other kind of important thing to know is you've got your typical wide wobble ones, um, so the Brat is definitely a wider wobbling square bill. Same thing with your Lucky Craft, Strike King 1.5s, 2.5s. Those ones are going to have a big wide rolling wobble to them versus um, the Rocco here and other kind of hybrid square bills are going to have a little bit of a tighter wobble. <laughs> And then something like your Berkeley Frit side is going to have a very narrow wobble. And so there's mixed schools of thought on that. Um, and I would say kind of in general, if you've got real dirty water, you want something with a little bit more action. So you want something with that wider wobble if the water is real dirty. So that's when you might opt for that 1.5 style bait um, versus if you got really clear water, really cold water, something like that, then you want to imitate 
um, these shad that are more lethargic, they're not swimming as quickly, they're not as erratic. So that's when these things like a Berkeley Fritz side is going to come into play um, and you're going to be able to imitate those slower moving shad a little bit better. Um, the Fritz side doesn't technically have a square bill, it's more of like a coffin uh, bill or something like that. It's, so it's a little bit of a hybrid, it's not a perfect example, um, but there are flat sided square bills out there. Um, so just think of your flat bills as, as the water is cooling or as the fish are more pressured, um, depending on how you want to look at it, that's when you want to swap to that more uh, flat sided shallow crankbait um, or, or flat sided square bill versus warmer water, dirtier water, more active fish. That's when you can think about that, that wider wobble, that 1.5, 2.5 type profile because it's going to put off a lot more vibration. Those fish can hone in on it and, and get it. All right, so we've we've talked about square bills. That's going to be probably your more common um, shallow crankbait, and probably what most people are used to or most people have seen. Um, the other ones are going to be your mid depth uh, crankbaits. So I've got a Rapala DT6 here, and then a Spro Little John MD here. Um, so both of these are not square bills, right? So they've got our typical rounded bill of a of your typical crankbait. Um, what that allows it to do is dive a lot deeper than a square bill. So whereas a square bill is going to be running three to five feet on average, you know, these are going to run five to seven feet or so. So it gives you that little bit extra depth. And what I like about that is, again, we, we've talked um, in that last video in the fall that the fish are chasing the bait and they might be in the same creek they might be near those those shallow flats but sometimes they pull out sometimes they're a little bit deeper and so you need these mid-depth crankbaits to get to them um, so I, I talked earlier about how I hate rattling crankbaits. One of the few exceptions is the Spro Little John. I think they've done a really good job. They've got a rubberized um, BB in there. So it, it does rattle, but it's, it's much more subtle. It's not the annoying, like, you know, dropping a marble on the floor rattle that some of those other ones have with just the metal pellets in there. Um, so something like this is really going to be good. Um, and then, you know, you can never go wrong with something like a DT6. Um, a Fritz side 7 or a 9, something like that, are going to be really good. Again, especially as the water cools off or as fish get really pressured, um, these flat sided crankbaits I think are going to excel really well. Um, you know, so make sure you've got some of those in your arsenal. They're going to be super helpful. Okay, guys, so let's talk about color on these shallow crankbaits that we're going to be throwing. Um, You'll hear again and again and again, match the hatch, match the hatch, match the hatch. And I would say, you know, a lot of times that is good. Um, it's a little bit more um, nuanced than that, I guess I would say, in that you have to think about your water and your light conditions as well. Um, and then you have to also realize that if you're matching the hatch, um, why would a bass attack your crankbait when it's got literally tens of thousands of shad that look just like it that are, you know, five feet over there. Um, so I would say, you know, while there are a lot of times you do want to match the hatch, um, you can, know, you, you know, it's a good place to start. But if you're realizing, hey, I'm around fish, I know they're here, that's when you might want to think about switching it up. So going to something a little bit brighter, um, something with some chartreuse in it or some brighter blues or maybe a little bit of red or something, you know, whatever it is, um, feel free, you know, I would encourage you to tinker, play with colors a little bit. We always get hung up on matching the hatch, but sometimes if your bait stands out a little bit, it might give the bass a reason to react to it, to go over there and grab it. Uh, and you might see more success that way. So don't be afraid to play with colors. Matching the hatch is awesome. It's always a good place to start, but don't be afraid to throw something a little bit brighter, a little bit different. You know, just think about the guy in the boat ahead of you who fished this area an hour ago. You know, was he more likely to be throwing a shad color or was he throwing something that's got more chartreuse in it? And you know, whatever the answer to that question is, maybe you want to do the opposite. So don't be afraid to do things a little bit different and uh, you might find that you catch some more fish. All right guys, so we've talked about some of our different shallow crankbaits. We've talked about square bills and some of the different round bills. We've talked about some different colors, whether or not there's rattles, all that sort of stuff. And all that, you know, it comes into play at some point or another, but 
the most important thing um, I would argue other than of course the crankbait that you're throwing is what you're throwing that crankbait on. Now a crankbait is one of those baits that rod matters a lot, okay? So the crankbait is an open hook bait. Anytime you've got an open hook bait, especially with, with treble hooks, um, you gotta think before you buy a rod for that. Now. ALX has taken a lot of the thought out of that in the Icos Hustler. So this rod I've got right here is, it's one of the most popular ALX rods for a reason. This thing is a crankbait workhorse and it doesn't matter if it's a square bill like this, it doesn't matter if it's a small finesse crankbait, anywhere up to like a 15 foot diver, the Hustler can handle it. So. Um, why is this thing so good? So you want a crankbait rod that has a lot of backbone to it. That's why you'll see a lot of crankbait rods are kind of a glass style rod, just like this Hustler is. Um, what that means is it's a little bit wider, beefier rod down here at the base. That gives you that big backbone that you can really lay into those fish, but it's also got a really good parabolic bend. It's got a lot of tip to it. So that one that helps you launch the crankbait out there really far. You can get these nice long casts, stay away from the fish, not spook them. Um, but what that, that flimsy tip kind of also does is allows the fish, when they eat this thing, it allows this rod to load up so you're not yanking the crankbait out of their mouth or pulling it away from them. They're really gonna get it good and then you're gonna feel them. You're gonna be able to have kind of a nice sweeping hook set and be able to pin those fish and get them to the boat a lot more often than if you were using, you know, an extra fast or a fast action rod. So these, these moderate action or crankbait action rods, uh, you might hear it a lot of different ways, are gonna be important. So this Hustler is a medium heavy, moderate. Um, and like I said, this thing can handle really any type of crankbait you wanna throw other than your really deep divers. And so if you have to have one crankbait rod, do yourself a favor, get a hustler, okay? Now, for reels, um, again, you'll hear me say again and again, I like six series reels. I like them because you can do a little bit of everything with them. They're not too slow, they're not too fast. They've got a lot of good winching power, um, but they're still, they're not like those big crankbait reels that it's like, you're just like churning butter or something, all right? So get a six, a six speed reel um, and that's gonna be great for pretty much all your crankbaits other than your deep divers. And then line choice is another important thing that we need to talk about with these crankbaits here. So line choice, one, it depends on the cover that you're throwing it in. Obviously heavier cover, heavier line, less cover, you can go to lighter line. Other things to think about with a crankbait. The larger the diameter of the line, i.e. the bigger the line, the heavier the line, there's more drag, there's more resistance on that line. And so when you've got a, a 15 pound line like this, you know, my three to five foot diving square bill might only really get down to two and a half, three feet because it's got this big beefy line that's got a lot of drag on it. It's preventing it to get down to its ideal or its max depth, okay? So again, if you go to the opposite end of that spectrum and you throw this on four pound line, this thing is probably gonna get deeper than it actually is you know, rated for. It might get to six or seven feet deep because there's just so little resistance. However, you know, do you really wanna be throwing a square bill on four pound line? I mean, I guess you could, but I wouldn't advise it. Um, you, you might be sad when a you know five or six pounder eats it and, and breaks you off. But um, you know, hey, maybe maybe if your fish are super pressured, you got to try it. I don't know. All right, y'all. So just remember when you're throwing these shallow crankbaits, think about your line size. Bigger line is going to take you shallower versus lighter line. You're going to be able to get deeper on those crankbaits. The other thing to think about too is action. So the heavier line, your crankbait is going to have less wobble lighter line is gonna have more wobble. Again, that drag, that resistance may prevent the bait from doing its intended motions. Um, so if you want the bait to have a little bit more action, maybe you know go to a lighter line, something like that. So all that is stuff to think about. So you know the square bill, um, shallow crankbaits in general is gonna be a great way to catch fish. You can catch them on it year round, but fall, definitely a lot of people are gonna be doing this. It's a handy technique to have. It's a little bit different. Um, you can cover a ton of water on it. Um, you get used to the bite. It's, you know, you gotta get used to learning what it feels like when this is bouncing off something versus when it's a fish. Um, but if you have a good rod, like the Icos Hustler from ALX, 
you're going to be able to one feel those bites two get a good hook set get the hooks in the fish's mouth and then fight the fish all the way to the boat get them in the boat um, so make sure you've got a good rod pair that with whatever your favorite uh, shallow crankbait is whatever your favorite reel is i love that six speed it's going to be kind of able to do a little bit of everything whether you want to fish it fast fish it slow whatever it is so hopefully this video is helpful for y'all um, i love throwing a shallow crankbait it's one of my absolute favorite ways to catch bass and um, something i've spent a lot of time doing over the years let me know if you have questions um, feel free to hit me up in the comments send me a, a message or an email or whatever i'd love to answer your questions try to help you out um, something that I've got, you know, just years of experience doing this, caught a lot of big bags and a lot of big fish doing this. I mean, shallow crankbaits. There, there have been times when I have one or two shallow crankbaits on the deck and that's it. So, um, love this technique. If you haven't done it, you definitely need to try. If you have tried it and it didn't work out so great, you know, follow what we talked about here. Think about your line choice. Think about your bait choice for where you're at and what the conditions are. And then make sure you have the good rod so that when you do get bit, this hustler is going to load up and it's going to get that fish back to the boat for you. So make sure all those things are there. You got those components. You stop by Haddon Outdoors to pick up your, your new favorite um, shallow crankbait. You know, you can't go wrong. Uh, start coming out here on Clark's Hill, chucking it around. You're going to catch some fish this fall. I appreciate you guys tuning in and keep chasing them.